Hi and welcome back to the Citizen Channel. We continue a look at the trial of Benjamin Mendy. Please, if you are new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notification. All these vlogs are coming out, all things Manchester City. Uh, not just this, obviously, uh, all, the good, all the good stuff as well. This is uh, a little bit more serious, of course, but uh, if you give us a sub, it'd be much appreciated. Give us a thumbs up, guys. I love doing this. A lot of people are watching these things and give us a thumbs up. Be much appreciated. Make an old city fan very, very happy, right? So let's have a look at day nine, Thursday, the 25th of August, uh, 2022. Yes, uh, just to summarize, Mendy 28 has been charged with eight counts of rape against five women, one count of attempted rape, and one count of sexual assault. The offences are alleged to have taken place on five different occasions at his Cheshire mansion between October 2018 and August 2021 related to seven women in total. Mr Maturi, 41 from Eccles, has also pleaded not guilty to eight counts of rape and four counts of sexual assault relating to eight women. They're both, both obviously being tried in, in the same trial. Both men deny all charges. Judge Stephen Everett resides at Chester Crown Court. And my thanks again to the Manchester Evening News for their little timeline and uh, court proceedings on the Manchester Evening News website. Uh, which uh, I sort of use for this, and I just quote word for word. I don't try and make any judgments or pass any comments. It's just a straightforward uh, reading from the, the court diary, if you like. 10.53, the trial resumed. Ellen at Law's QC is continuing to cross-examine woman four. She asked the witness about the conversation she could be seen having with Mr Mendy on the nightclub CCTV footage after he's alleged to have raped her. Ms Law suggests to the woman, when you see that footage of you walking over to Mr Mendy in the club wanting to say goodbye to him, you were effectively talking to him about wanting to see him later. The witness replies, if I wanted to see him later, I would have gone back. When asked what she had spoken to Mr Mendy about, woman 4 replies, I don't really know. Ms Law's QC is now asking the witness about her decision to return to Mr Mendy's home two days after the alleged rape. The witness says she and several other women went to Mr Mendy's mansion in the early hours of the morning after visiting a nightclub. The city defender was not present at the time, she adds. She says she had not gone to the house to see Mr Mendy or anyone else, but because her friend, who was driving her home, had wanted to go. Mr Mendy's defence barrister asks woman four if she remained on friendly terms with Mr Mendy via text following the alleged rape. The witness replies, they acted normal with me and I acted normal with them. I never put myself in a situation like that again. Every time they asked me to come round, I never went round. Ms Laws asked the witness about messages he received from friends after Mr Mendy was arrested in August of last year. The woman had previously told the court she had told friends, it's not me. That because nothing had happened to you, Mr Law suggests. Ms Law suggests. That's because nothing had happened to you, Ms Law suggests. That's incorrect, the woman replies. Woman 4 is now being asked about contacts she had with another alleged victim after Mr Mendy's arrest. Ms Laws alleges the witness and another woman who accuses Mr Mendy of raping her in July of last year sent each other messages of support in November. In January, Woman 4 was allegedly contacted by police and said she did not want to get involved and make a statement, the jury heard. I was scared, she tells the court. I did, know what, did not know what to do. The woman later agreed to speak to police, the jury is told. At the time, she said she was still very much in denial. The woman said it was only after she told police what had happened with Mr Mendy that she realised I had been raped. At 11.46, there was a short break. The return at 12.32, and it resumed with Eleanor Claus QC defending, asking woman four about a Google search she is said to have made in January of this year. She alleges the woman entered the following into the search engine. How much is Benjamin Mendy worth? Ms Laws added, the next day you actually started to write an account on your phone of what happened with Mr Mendy. Do you remember that? The witness replies, I don't remember that. Ms Laws asked the witness, why would you be interested in how much money he earns or how much he is worth? The woman says she made the search as Mr Mendy was in the news at the time. Ms Laws asked her, have you a mind to apply for compensation at some point? The witness responds, no. Lisa Wilde in QC defending Louis Sahar Maturi is now cross-examining woman four. She asked the woman about her allegation that Mr Maturi offered her money to remain at Mr Mendy's before she was allegedly raped. Mr Saha cannot remember that conversation, Ms Wiley says to the witness. If it did take place, it was said in a jokey way. 
The witness replies, I don't know why he would say it's in a jokey way. At 12.59, the court adjourned for lunch. 2.40pm, the trial resumed. Lisa Wilding QC, defending Mr Maturi, continued her cross-examination of woman four. The witness is being asked about a claim she made to police during her interview with officers back in February. The court hears woman four told officers that on the evening she was allegedly raped, another woman informed her she had been sexually assaulted by Mr Maturi. Ms Wilding says woman four had earlier told police she was not aware that anyone else at the party had alleged that anything had happened to them. The witness says she thought she knew about the allegation the girl had made. Ms Wilding asked the woman about a message she received out of the blue in October last year from another woman who says she accuses both Mr Mendy and Mr Maturi of raping her. Ms Wilding asked the woman about a message she received uh, sorry, uh, of raping her. They deny the charges they face. The witness says the woman gave her the number of a police officer and told her to ring it. Woman 4 says the other woman did not explain why and she did not call the officer. The next month, the officer rang woman four and a conversation took place, jurors here. Following the conversation, the witness says she contacted the other complainant to ask if something had happened to her. She says the woman told her something happened with Ben, so she told her something had happened to her too. Woman four was then asked about her relationship with another complainant who accuses Mr Maturi of raping and sexually assaulting her in April 2021. He denies the the charges he faces on this. The witness tells jurors that she met the woman at a party in August of last year. She said the woman told her she had been raped by Mr Maturi, the jury was told. In response, she says she told the woman she was not surprised, the court heard. At 3.35, Miss Wilding QC has finished cross-examining the witness and the court is now taking a short break. At 3.56, the jury is back and Timothy Cray QC prosecuting is re-examining woman four who is in the witness box giving evidence from behind the screen. The woman is asked about an incident on the evening as she first met Mr Mendy three days before she accuses him of raping her. After visiting a nightclub in Manchester City Centre, she says Mr Mendy and Mr Maturi invited to an after party at Mr Mendy's house. Woman 4 says she agreed to go but changed her mind when Mr Maturi refused to let her friend come with her, the jury's told. He would only let me come back by myself, she told the courts. He was having a go at me for not trusting them and not coming back by myself. He took my stuff off me and put it in the boot. He was arguing. She continued, I was not going by myself, so I ended up not going. Mr Cray asked the woman when she realised what Mr Mendy's alleged to have done to her was wrong. She replies, instantly, I knew what happened was wrong, instantly. Everyone was so normal with it, with me that I did not know how to act back. Mr Cray asked woman for why she continued to stay in touch with Mr Mendy over social media after the alleged rape. The witness replies, for me, he was someone I could not really avoid. When you go out in Manchester, you can't avoid these people. The easiest and safest thing to do was act as normal as I could. I was civil, but every time I got asked to come see me, come round, I never went round and put myself in that position again. The witness says going to the police was a massive, scary thing to do. She adds, when they approached me, they said I had a choice whether I would come forward or not, so I still had the choice. Mr Cray says to her, I think the suggestion is you told an untrue story because you were trying to help the other girls. The witness denied this. At 4.24pm, the jury finished hearing evidence for the day and it's actually the trial has now be adjourned until Tuesday, yeah, next Tuesday morning, the August the 30th or so. Obviously, with the bank holiday Monday, they're going to uh, throw them a Friday in as well and have, have a long weekend break for the uh, obviously everyone involved. Please let me know your comments, guys. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, I've been very, very interested. And uh, thanks for watching. Please, until we meet again, please stay safe. Bye for now.